A mighty a-hole for kicking out a very vocal child-free flatmate after my wife got pregnant. Basically, my wife and I, 29 male slash 24 female, bought our own house a couple of years ago and got two flatmates in to help pay the mortgage. Two bedrooms plus and suite for us to use and one bedroom each plus shared bathroom for the two flatmates. One flatmate, Alex, pretty much keeps to herself while the other one, Caitlin, 32 female, is quite strongly opinionated and much more social. Caitlin is also child-free and occasionally very vocal about it. It's not constant, but when something child-related comes up, she will interject without fail. Anyway, wife and I were finally successful in conceiving and decided to tell both of our flatmates three months into the pregnancy. We chose three months as we didn't want to announce it to anyone too early in case of a miscarriage, but also wanted to give flatmates plenty of time to find somewhere else if they understandably didn't want to live with a newborn. In the end, both said they wanted to stay flatting with us as the location is good and the house is newly built, as most houses in my country are cold and damp, turn-of-the-century wooden cottages. Anyway, almost immediately after this, Caitlin begins making snide remarks about our soon-to-be child. Things like she should get a discount on rent for putting up with a baby, she's not going to get any sleep with a baby in the house, we should have told them we were trying, etc. At first, my wife just brushed these off, though I did have a word with Caitlin that they're not appreciated. Since then, the snide remarks became more frequent and rude, like calling us selfish for bringing a child into this world, saying our social lives are going to be over, etc. After a couple months of this, I decided that I don't want to put up with this kind of negativity in what will be a very stressful but also special time of my life. So, I consulted with my wife, and with her support, have decided to kick Caitlin out of our house. As a flatmate without a formal signed rental agreement, she actually has no tenancy rights in my country, though I still opted to give her a month to find a new place as a sign of good faith. Caitlin is throwing a hissy fit saying I'm being unfair that since she pays rent, she should have a say in the direction of the household, and that we were selfish for having a kid without even telling flatmates. Alex is on the fence, though has expressed that I'm being a bit unfair to Caitlin. Wife, as I said, fully supports me, though she's less annoyed by her behavior than myself, if I'm being honest. So yeah, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your peace of mind in your house comes first, and she sounds insufferable. Yeet her. I agree, not the a-hole. As long as no laws are being broken, renting a room in someone's house does not give you the right to dictate how they choose to live. Just because someone is anti-child, anti-vax, anti-pet or anti-pasta, they don't have the right to expect others to live by their personal viewpoints. It's part of why I am against any laws being made that are based on the religious beliefs of any one set of people, especially if the law is expected to apply to everyone. I don't mean the rules that apply universally of don't steal, don't kill, don't maliciously lie, etc. I'm talking about the my religion says not to get tattoos. So even if your religion says you can, I'm making a law that forces you to live by the rules of my religion, not yours. Kind of stuff. There are two types of child-free people. One just doesn't wish to have children, but they accept that children are a part of life and usually enjoy interacting with kids. The second type hates children, thinks they shouldn't exist and makes everyone around them miserable. Your flatmate is the latter. If she stayed, she would get even more obnoxious after the baby arrives. I mean, how dare she say you should consult her about your family planning? Kick her out in good conscience, not the a-hole. This is more than that. This woman is a moron. It's one thing to hate being around kids, but you don't slag off the landlord's unborn child if you intend to live there and act like you should somehow be consulted about their family planning. Totally not the a-hole. Since she pays rent, she should have a say in the direction of the household would apply if you were all renting the place together and were on equal footing, not in a situation where you owned a house and you happen to have two spare bedrooms that you're renting out. Also, she was informed in plenty of time, chose to stay anyway, and is now being a prick about it. Next story. Am I the a-hole for fighting for full custody of my kids against their mom? I, 28 male, am divorced. My ex-wife, 27 female, who will call Brittany and I decided to do a shared parenting. My current wife and I get them throughout the school year, while she gets every other weekend, and then she gets them majority of the summer while I get them every other weekend. So for the majority of the year, they are living with my wife and I. My kids spent their first summer there and absolutely hated it. They have been begging me to fix it so that they don't have to live with her and her boyfriend during the summer. 
Her boyfriend will call Steve, 24 male, does not get along well with the kids. The kids have accused him of abuse and neglect on multiple occasions to multiple different people. This is mostly why got majority of their custody. There have been multiple allegations, including from other family members witnessing this behavior, CPS investigations, etc. Whenever I would bring up a concern with Brittany, she would either not respond or deflect. Even her family thinks she was grasping for straws to make me look bad. The straw that broke the camel's back for me was the day my six-year-old son called everyone on his tablet begging for food. He got a hold of my mom and said Steve was sleeping, their mom was at work and that they weren't allowed to leave their room or they'd get in trouble. My mom got a hold of my wife, who then called me while I was at work crying, saying the kids were hungry and calling it asking for food. I immediately got a hold of Brittany and demanded an explanation for the situation. She acted like she had no idea what I was talking about and said our son is going through a growth spurt and is just eating a lot more than usual. When my son was home with me again, I asked him about it. And he said that's just how things go at his mom's. He explained that they don't really eat until their mom gets home from work which is in the evening. And that's another reason they don't want to live there. I filed for emergency custody and full custody. Emergency custody was granted quickly, as Brittany and Steve were technically homeless over the summer and made the kids go through that with them. And yes, I asked her to let me keep the kids until she had her own residence, and she refused. With emergency custody in place, this means the kids do not go to her until we go back to court, but she has visitation. And now she's very angry with me. She spews nasty comments to me here and there. And her last one, she even asked, Why would you do this to the kids? If you had any concerns, you could have just talked to me. This whole ordeal is largely due to the fact the kids hated there. They've made the same complaints, and we have had the same concerns. And Brittany and Steve have done nothing to make their home better for them after many chances. This just makes me think it will not get better. I just want my kids to be happy and safe. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, and the courts seem to agree. She just doesn't seem to like that things aren't going her way. As for, you could have just talked to me, Opie did, and she excused away starving her own son. She didn't want her like Opie getting a truer second opinion, because the truth was she was being a very neglectful parent. Even her own family doesn't have faith in her ability to be a good parent. Not the a-hole, but why are you posting on AITA? The purpose of the custody hearing is to determine what's in the kid's best interest. If you get sole custody, it's because the court could substantiate the claims of abuse slash neglect and deem the house unsafe for your kids. I've been feeling conflicted since the kids missed their mom over the holidays. She hasn't scheduled any visitation and the kids miss her. Bro, one million times not the a-hole. Your kids are your number one priority in this. Their experience with a boyfriend is evidence that your kids have unfortunately been exposed to a dangerous environment. Things can only go downhill with that kind of people. I would have fought for full custody from the very beginning. But fortunately, it seems nothing big has happened and now it's time to keep your children safe from them. Especially this Steve. The courts basically told me since my kids are so young, they don't want to take them away from their mom and have them miss out on time with their mom. It was a lot of fighting back and forth. And a shared parenting plan was what they ultimately came up with. I didn't like the idea either. Next story. Am I the a-hole for cutting my mom's allowance to pay for daycare when she couldn't babysit for me? Last year, my husband, 35 male, and I, 34 female, had our first and last child. We were fortunate enough to be able to stay at home with him for almost a year by staggering our parental leave and vacations. But now that time has run out and we must return to work. I asked my mother, 56 female, if she would be available to watch him during the week and she said no. Fair enough. That's her prerogative. My husband and I researched daycares in the areas where we work and settled on one that came highly recommended. It was expensive though and that meant cutting down on expenses, like the monthly allowance that we'd been giving my mother. A bit of background to this. My parents were married for 28 years before my father decided that he wanted someone younger and sexier than my mother. For all of those 28 years, my mother had been a stay-at-home mom then a stay-at-home wife. With my father leaving, she was now meant to survive somehow in a world where she had never really worked. Because when they got married, my father didn't want her to and because she was raised in a traditional religious family, she did what the head of household wanted. I'm not even going to go into that man's hypocrisy. Either way, he's gone and even though she got some alimony, she didn't press for as much as she should have. Again, that religious conditioning. And she's struggling. 
My husband and I have been supplementing my mother's income to a hefty amount every month, which was not an issue, until we had to put baby into daycare and found out just how expensive that was in a very high cost of living area. In light of that, we told her that we would need to cut our allowance in half. We were not planning to start immediately, but would take the financial hit for three months to give her time to adjust and move things around. She got upset and told us that we were punishing her for saying no. I told her that was not the case, but it is hard to maintain two households virtually by ourselves. If we had to pay an exorbitant amount of our salaries to daycare every month for the foreseeable future, she was still angry and asked us to leave. Later, my sister called us upset that we were abandoning mom and making her struggle just because she wouldn't do our bidding. So, I suggested to her that she increase how much she was helping, considering she still lives at home. She called me a freaking witch and hung up on me. So Reddit, am I really the a-hole here? Edited to add, I wanted to answer some recurring questions here. My sister's ability to help is limited and sporadic because she struggles with mental illness. It got much worse in recent years and we're working to get her on disability, but that is a process. I guess that's why I feel bad about a comment I made to my sister because it was a moment of lashing out, when I know that she's in a tough spot through no fault of her own. As for my mom, I will work with her to make sure that she can go back to work, especially given my sister's challenges. My mother's neither lazy nor a leech. Unfortunately, she's been bitten down by being raised in a traditional culture and having it drilled into her what the duty of a wife is. She was then betrayed by everyone when her husband left. Now for the top comments. Not day whole. You're not punishing her for saying no. You are being exceedingly generous to give your mother an allowance in the first place. But it is not your responsibility. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. And you're still being exceedingly generous to give her half. And if your sister isn't paying at least half of your mom's household expenses, mortgage, food, utilities, etc., then she's got nothing to say in the matter. Which would explain why sister was calling with the insults, since she was being subsidized too. It's possible mom asked sister to pay more. Not day whole. You have a small family to take care of. Your mom, at 56, still has plenty of time in which to work. While she might not get a high-paying job, she could still get something unskilled if she chose. Many employers take into account things like, I spent my life raising my kids. That said, knowing nothing else about your sister's situation, it's hard to make a call on her behavior. Many employers take into account things like, I spent my life raising my kids. Yep, I notarized an interview for someone whose kids had flown the nest once. The interviewer all but rewarded each question to help the applicant apply them to what they may have had to do around a home, organized for special occasions, etc. Some people honestly don't realize what skills they have. Last story. Am I the a-hole for crying over my dad, accidentally calling my daughter his and his wife's child? I, 20, have an 8-month-old daughter. It's just me and her because her dad didn't want anything to do with her. Fine by me, and currently I have zero interest in dating. My dad wasn't exactly an active participant in my bringing. He met my stepmother when I was 10 and they've since had my two brothers one being only two months older than my daughter. I moved in with him because my mother couldn't handle a baby in the house. I'm currently doing my L3 apprenticeship in childcare. I work 35-hour weeks. Not long, but one of the settings is an hour walk plus nearly hour bus ride. So total nearly two hours, the other is an hour bus. I'm out usually 6.30 a.m. till 7 p.m. I pay rent, cook for everyone, and do chores. I pay my stepmother to babysit for me as she is a stay-at-home mom. However, in two months, my daughter will be able to start the nursery I work in. I know my stepmother has always wanted a daughter. Sometimes I do get jealous or upset how close she is to my daughter. As in sometimes she won't let me hold her slash feed her or walk her. She does apologize afterwards. Says she gets anxious because how young I am. But I'm hoping if I suck it up, I'll be able to afford my own place in a year. My stepmother's sister visited and I overheard my dad refer to my daughter and his son as his and my stepmother's little babies. I waited till step-aunt left and reminded him that he didn't even want to be called granddad. He's not my baby's dad, nor she's the mother. He said, sorry, with how often we look after them, sometimes it does feel like she's our daughter. He's been encouraging me to go to university. I didn't get my math. Doubt I'll get my functional math, so university's out of the question. But he mentioned how he'd be continuing to look after her if I go to university. I said I wouldn't even bother trying to go to uni if he was going to cross a boundary. 
I did cry. My stepmother said I was overreacting and that I should be happy how close everyone is, slash, how much they do for me. And sometimes people do form unconscious bonds and thoughts. And since they apologized, I shouldn't have manipulated them. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. As in sometimes she won't let me hold her, slash, feed her or walk her. WTF? She's really crossing the line. And must respect some clear boundaries I don't even have to mention. The problem here isn't they sometimes feel like their grandkids are their own children, but actually trying to undermine your role as a parent. Exactly, not the a-hole, but I would seriously start stashing any money you can and get out ASAP. This is not a healthy situation for anyone, but especially you. You're working so hard to provide for your child and they are undermining you. I cut my mother out of my life when she tried that with my baby. You're the parent OP, not them. Babysitting a child doesn't make them the parents. Had a family friend who kicked her own mom out of her house and did single parenting alone because didn't like that grandma thought she should become the second parent after dad passed in a tragic accident. Then was bringing the kid over to a sister slash brother-in-law's house after dude had been accused of some scary stuff. Your stepmom is a babysitter who's acting in highly inappropriate ways with your daughter. Withholding your child from you is especially scary. And your dad referring to your daughter as your stepmoms is also a cause for concern. I would be worried that they might try to use the police slash legal system to take your daughter away from you, especially since your stepmom is already espousing concerns about you caring for your own daughter and implying that you're incapable or incompetent. Given all this together, I'd be seriously concerned about their motives. Not they whole.